the other thing that happened, uh, which is noteworthy, is uh, the achievement gap was obliterated uh, through uh, the inclusion of uh, students from all over. And uh, in 2007, at Anza Elementary School, for example, the African American cluster, which was a significant subgroup, uh, scored an identical API with the uh, white um, subgroup. So that was a pretty amazing statistic. And then we came back in 2008 in those state tests. And at Dana Middle School, the uh, African American group actually outpointed the white group. These are things that uh, weren't happening uh, throughout the state. And I thought that the California Department of Education should look into that. And I called it to their attention uh, with the hope that there might be opportunities there to study what we were doing, how we achieved that, and what could be replicated in other districts. But uh, uh, surprisingly to me, uh, there wasn't any interest in looking into how we had done that. So um, years went by with, uh, out, out, without much coming from that. Uh, which I thought was the whole point. We were trying to eliminate the achievement gap, but it seemed like people were more interested in hosting conferences to talk about it, writing books, making speeches, than they were actually in doing it or studying a public uh, school district that had achieved it. So that gap uh, uh, was solved, and uh, it's, uh, it can be done other places, obviously, if people would look at uh, how that was achieved. Um, so those are some of the outcomes. Now along the way and adding to the benefits of the program were the facilities issues. I was able to get three different bonds passed by the voters in Wiseburn over my 15 years there. In 1997, in 2000, and in 2007 about a hundred million dollars in bonds were passed by the voters, which is an extremely high amount given the size of the districts. Probably there were more, more money behind each Wiseburn student facilities wise than any place in California. And with that, I had the opportunity to demolish all the schools that I had attended as a boy and replace them with Taj Mahals, with uh, wonderful facilities for the 21st century. And anybody who drives over there today can see those facilities in the ground. Of course, once you make spectacular plants with great looking grounds, uh, people uh, pay attention to that. And then they find out, how can I get my son in this school? And so that tended to, to drive up further the pressure to try to get into Weisburn schools, because now they looked good. Now remember before, they were performing well, but they were ugly. And now they're looking good and they're performing well. So uh, people want in more than ever. A lot of the general public, you know, judges a school by how it looks as they drive by. Is the lawn cut? Is the school painted? If they call the school, how does the secretary answer the phone? And that's about as deep as it gets. It's pretty superficial. So you get all those things lined up right. Um, everything else flows from there. And then if you really have um, a quality inside those good looking buildings, uh, it's uh, of course all the more better. So how could uh, you do this in your setting? because everyone has different opportunities and what works in one place may not work uh, identically in another. Well, first of all, you need to have a vision of what can be. And if you don't have that, because I really think that's a blessing that, uh, that uh, you're given, then you need to associate yourself with someone who has it so that that's present uh, in the environment uh, when the planning's being done. What can be? Second, uh, an entrepreneurial approach is really uh, a valuable skill set to have. And not everybody has that. So if you don't have it, get somebody who does. 
Now when you put a, a visionary with an entrepreneur, at that intersection magic occurs. Wonderful things happen. We have so many people in this country who have ideas of what could be, but they don't have the money to make them happen. They can't figure out how to fund them. Then we have a lot of people that have money, but they have no idea what can be. They don't have any vision. And so when you have those two things together and they marry, uh, wonderful things spring from that. Um, the other thing that made us successful, and everybody can do this if they think about it, study it, and start to behave this way, is to provide excellent customer service. And customer service means listening to people. What are they saying to you, and can you meet their needs? Because that's not being done very well in America today. And when it is done well, it breeds customer loyalty, and it breeds word of mouth talk about uh, the great service they received at a particular restaurant, at the dry cleaners, uh, wherever they go. Because Americans are hungry for personalization and people listening to them and meeting their needs, they'll go back there and they'll tell others. It's no different in the middle school. It's no different in elementary school or high school. If, uh, if you do that, you will uh, spread good things about your schools uh, through other people and uh, also get uh, trapped in a, uh, a spiral of success which is where you want to be. Now we used um, quite a few tools for recruitment uh, to get this program going and to keep it going and uh, first we produced propaganda I would call it about the qualities in the schools. We wanted to feature our best programs and uh, show people what their kids would get if they attended our schools. And so we did some nice uh, graphics and printed brochures which we handed out, uh, oh, every place from teacher job fairs. We were recruiting teachers to uh, school library talks about Weisburn. Um, I was out in the community recruiting uh, quite a bit. I was at uh, the public libraries, the mommy and me classes, uh, churches, uh, coffee clutches, wherever I could go where parents cared about uh, the quality of education and had a value in it because they knew it would change lives and make for a better future. Uh, and I knew that if I convinced those parents and I delivered to those parents, then they would become essentially extensions of myself and they would tell others about the experience that they'd have. So as I talked to them, I always under-promised really what they would get if they came to Weisburn schools and then my teachers and my staff over-delivered. So they got more than they thought they were going to get. And of course, this makes people really surprised and happy in a good way. Now, when I would talk to people, I was saying everything they wanted to hear. I knew what they wanted because I'd studied the Gallup poll and uh, saw its results. And as I presented that, the parents who are out shopping for the best schools for their kids, uh, I think were somewhat in a state of disbelief that they could go to a place that would have 100% highly qualified teachers. Class sizes would be under 10 for two hours of the day. The facilities would be, you know, remarkable. And there'd be lots of instructional materials and special programs. Uh, so for, uh, for them, we started uh, touring the schools so that they could see them firsthand, walk through them. And... Uh, that's when I realized more than ever how important safety was to, um, to the parents. Because uh, a tour would uh, start off in the lobby of uh, school and uh, I'd spend maybe an hour and a half on the tours uh, thinking that they'd want to see some of the great teachers teach second grade, etc. Uh, or look at the reading books we use, etc. Um, while there was some interest in that, and of course the overwhelming beauty of the campuses, the size of the classrooms, 
the arts and the libraries included there. Uh, the things I found they were most interested in was the quality of cleanliness of the boys' bathroom. We all toured the boys' bathroom, no boys in there at the time. And uh, also the decorum on the playground. Now both of those are measures of safety really and those were the things that they were looking at. We don't have gangs and uh, and we had very clean bathrooms, we had everything orderly and that alone I think I could have cut the tour down to maybe 10 minutes uh, because those things spoke volumes to those parents and uh, so they uh, they were ready to sign up and uh, and go forward, uh, how do we get, get this permit? Who are we going to have to kill? How much money do you want? Oh no, just fill out the papers and we'll work you in. So uh, all that was good and uh, it just kept growing and of course they did tell others.